Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug. I'd like to welcome you back to another chemistry video. If you're new here, take a look around my channel. This is the place for high school chemistry, both first year chemistry and AP. And so if you like what you see, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe if you're so inclined. Well, in this video, we're taking a look at the differences between physical properties and chemical properties, as well as physical changes and chemical changes. So when we talk about physical properties, these are the characteristics of a substance that we can observe without a chemical change. And that means we don't have to have a chemical reaction. We can just observe it based upon the way something is at the current time. So for example, we can take an object's temperature without carrying out a chemical reaction. So temperature is a physical property. Likewise, odor. We can smell something uh, and we can identify what that substance is very often. Maybe it's a vinegar or uh, some other substance that has a very distinctive odor. The color of something. We can just look at something with our eyes and that's a physical property, isn't it? How about weight? We can take an object, put it on a scale, and we can see what it weighs. That's a physical property. Or an object's melting point. Some students get a little tripped up on this because melting point is just physical. We're just changing from a solid to a liquid when something's melting. So that is a physical property as well. On the other hand, chemical properties are the characteristics of a substance that describe how something reacts or how well it reacts chemically. So in order to observe a chemical property, we have to have a chemical reaction. So for example, if I say that something is flammable, well, the flammability of a substance refers basically to how well it burns or how well it bursts into flames. And we can only observe that if there's a chemical reaction. So flammability is a chemical property. Reactivity with oxygen. There are certain substances that react with oxygen very quickly, very slowly. These are, this is a chemical property. How well something reacts with water. You've heard of toxicity. If something is toxic or non-toxic, that is how something reacts with a human or a living organism. And so that's toxicity. Or chemical stability. There are some things that are very stable. They don't react very much. Well, once again, this describes how well something reacts, or in some cases, does not react. So we should be able to take some properties and classify them into either being physical or chemical. So make sure that you can do that. Now, in the same vein here, we're going to talk about physical changes and chemical changes as well. Now, physical changes refer to a change in the state or the appearance of a substance. So in this picture here, we have uh, what looks like a chef who is cutting maybe some onions or some sort of a, a vegetable there. Well, that's a physical change. It's still whatever it was to start with, it's just in a smaller uh, chunks now. That's a physical change. Cutting or taking a piece of paper and ripping it into shreds. Once again, that's a physical change, isn't it? It's still paper. We're just changing its appearance. Or maybe this thermometer represents heating something up or cooling something down. Once again, that's a physical change as well. Or we could take a look at this ice cube that seems to be melting. Once again, that's a change in state, isn't it? Changing from a solid to a liquid. That is a physical change. On the other hand, we have chemical changes. Now, chemical changes are when we actually change the identity of the chemical substance that we're working with. In chemistry, we usually call these reactions or chemical reactions. And this is kind of the, the bread and butter of what we like to study in chemistry is chemical changes or chemical reactions. And as we progress through this course, we're going to learn about lots of chemical reactions. So stay tuned for that. Now, chemical changes might involve something like this, where something is being burned. That's a chemical reaction. Or maybe we have some sort of a chemical reaction in the laboratory, some sort of a, a mad scientist concoction that we have here, gases being given off, as you can see. Maybe some kind of explosion. Maybe something is being dropped into that little container there, and we see sparks being given off. Obviously a chemical reaction, isn't it? Or we could take a look at a much slower chemical reaction. The bus is undergoing a rusting, or as we sometimes call it, an oxidation process, isn't it? So that's a chemical reaction as well. 
So lots of different types of chemical changes and chemical reactions to be aware of. Now, as we talk about chemical reactions, we need to realize that there are some very specific signs that a chemical reaction is taking place. Let's imagine for a second that you take a piece of paper and you burn that piece of paper. What are you going to see that tells you that a chemical reaction is taking place? Well, one thing you might see is a change in color. That paper might change from a white color to a gray or a black color, right? A very distinct sign that a reaction is taking place. A change in odor. You can probably smell something, right? You smell it. A change in odor. Good sign of a reaction. A change in texture. So the paper might have been smooth or kind of fluffy before, and then it turns all brittle, right? You have ashes there, so a change in texture. A large change in temperature. If you were to poke your finger into the burning piece of paper, uh, you'd get burned, wouldn't you? So a large change in temperature. Production of light. Sometimes we call that a flame. That's a good sign of a, of a reaction. Sometimes sparks or something like that. Production of a gas, right? So in the in the case of burning paper, we'd call that smoke, wouldn't we? In some reactions, we also have the production of a precipitate. A precipitate is when you take two solutions and mix them together and you have a solid that's formed there. That solid that's formed from the mixture of two solutions is called a precipitate. We'll talk more about precipitates later in this course. Well, let's say we have a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction like this where aluminum metal and iron 3 oxide combine to yield molten iron metal and aluminum oxide. That chemical reaction is called the thermite reaction. Now if I asked you to write all that down that might seem like quite a bit to write and so in science in chemistry we have kind of a shorthand for this. We use chemical equations. And notice that every substance that's represented in the sentence up here is also represented in the chemical equation. You may not know what all these things stand for right now, but at some point in this course, you're going to learn them. Al is for aluminum. Fe2O3 is for the iron 3 oxide. The Fe is for the iron metal. And the Al2O3 represents aluminum oxide. And we have a couple of other symbols as well. We have the S, which stands for solid. We have an L, which stands for liquid. G would stand for gas, if we had a gas, wouldn't it? Now, notice that we have reactants and we have products. Reactants are the substances that we have at the beginning of a chemical reaction. So these substances written on the left side of the arrow are the reactants. These are like the ingredients. So if you're trying to bake a cake, for example, uh, the reactants would involve or include flour and sugar and milk and whatever other ingredients you're going to put into your cake uh, mix, right? And then the arrow represents yields or produces. It means that there's a chemical reaction taking place. And then the products are what's written on the right side of the arrow. So in this case, the Fe iron and aluminum oxide, Al2O3, are the products. If we're baking a cake, the product would be, well, the cake, wouldn't it? So the products are what we're making over the course of this reaction. Now be aware that there are some other symbols that we can put into this here. And if you ever see an, a triangle written over the arrow, that means that heat has to be added in order to make the reaction work. And there are a lot of reactions like that. For example, we mentioned baking a cake. If you mix all the ingredients together and then just leave the cake mix out on the table all day, you're not going to have a cake, are you? You're just going to have a, a mass of batter that eventually gets dried out and gross, right? You have to put it in the oven and that heat causes the chemical reaction and then you have a cake at the end of the process. So some reactions require that heat. That's what the triangle represents. If you ever see a lightning bolt over the arrow, that means that electricity is required to make the reaction work. That's called electrolysis. And there are lots of reactions that are electrolysis processes. If you have another chemical symbol or a formula written over the arrow, 
that means that that symbol or that substance is acting as a catalyst. So in this case, PT is the symbol for platinum. So if you saw that, that would mean that platinum is acting as a catalyst in that particular process. One other thing about chemical reactions, there's this thing called the law of conservation of mass. We talked about uh, scientific laws or natural laws in, in a previous video. Matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. It just states what happens. It doesn't say how or why but matter is not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So if we start with 100 grams of reactants, we're gonna to have to end up with 100 grams of products. Well, I hope you learned something from this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. I hope to see you in the next video where we're gonna continue learning some more chemistry together.